we're doing this in a form of sacrifice, and it's through sacrifice, as Jesus taught us, that the most important changes are made. Amen. You know, lots more people are flooding in today and tonight, and yeah, it's well, every weekend it keeps getting bigger, so it's going to be wild. Tyler Shellac is a 27-year-old farmer from Alberta, Canada. He drove 2,000 miles to join the trucker convoy in Ottawa to protest vaccine mandates and other COVID restrictions. All right, how is this going to look? He's become one of the minor celebrities of the movement, with daily dispatches on his Facebook page, The Crackpot Farmer. Uh, it's a bit late for upload, sorry. I went on a little bit of a walk. Uh, There's less police running around this morning, which is pretty cool. Um, they seem to be taking a bit of a step back um, in terms of enforcing the area up here around Parliament Hill, but uh, they seem to be getting a little more aggressive with monitoring CB radios and trying to keep in touch with and on top of our convoys that are outside of town. I just started doing little 30 second or one minute long uh, videos of where we were, where we were going, or any big events that happened during the day. And more and more people started following it because they're having a hard time getting factual information. Why did you come out here? Uh, the past couple of years, you know, I've been watching what our government has been doing and the, the slippery slope we've been falling down. Governments don't often give back control once they've had it. What are the examples of government overreach that you see? I think that the, the vaccination passports requiring you to have taken something to, to be able to go to a hockey rink, to be able to eat inside of a restaurant. A government should not be able to segregate people based on their medical status. And uh, when this convoy thing started, it was supposed to be peaceful. We were just going to go and make our voices heard. I thought, that is something I can get behind. The convoy took off in January after the government announced that truckers who crossed the U.S. border would be required to be vaccinated. Over the next several weeks, hundreds of semi-drivers converged on cities across Canada and shut down major international roadways, including the Ambassador Bridge to Detroit. In Ottawa, more than 200 trucks turned the streets in front of Parliament into a non-stop party. How long have you been out here? I think we're going on day uh, 15. 15 right now. 15? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and what was your reason for coming here? Uh, the fight for freedom. I'm just taking time to see Canadians lose their rights and freedoms over the last two years. The reality is the protesters speak for a sliver of the Canadian public. 90% of the adult population is fully vaccinated, and polls consistently show that most Canadians disapprove of the ongoing blockades. And as the protests have drawn on, They've been fueled by extreme rhetoric and misinformation. Our government has been usurped by the World Economic Forum. They have it on the internet what they are going to do. So once we get our freedoms back, that's when the real fight starts. I don't see a vaccine. I see an experimental concoction, I honestly pray, that we don't wake up five years from now with thousands of Canadians getting disease and sicknesses that are going to be created by this. So far, the protests have been largely peaceful. But on Monday, Alberta police seized a cache of weapons at a trucker blockade. Are you willing to be employed to preserve and maintain the public peace? Yes. And viral videos from Ottawa showed participants being sworn in as a vigilante security force. At a site away from the main protest, we met with one of the self-appointed police. Can you explain to me what this is? This is a, a P P O peace officer. What does that mean? When we see people who do a troublemaker, we have, you know, it's our responsibility. You can arrest that person. You can arrest yeah, people. You can. And you take this person, give it to the police. I have Tyra here and my car. Now. You have hand ties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyra, Tyra. Who, who oh. gave you hand ties? I, I take it by myself. You brought them yourself. Exactly. Ottawa police haven't done much to clear the protest. But over the weekend, they started giving out tickets to some of the vehicles parked downtown. On Monday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act, a law that's never been used, giving the government sweeping powers to end the blockades. What would the country do if our own police and military or whatever turned on our own citizens in force? There would be a nationwide riot. 
Tyler Shellac says he won't be leaving soon. Are you worried that some people here might be preparing for violence? There definitely is a possibility of that happening, and the longer this drags on too, I think the higher chance there is of, of something happening. We definitely don't want to see anything like that, because I think as long as we stay peaceful, we have a higher chance of success. You are part of the plan, and we need to trust the plan. I believe the vaccine is part of a globalist agenda, and there's more to it than just being a vaccination against the COVID um, disease. What's the globalist agenda? The whole idea is to have one world government, like uh, one global currency, all digitalized, of course, and uh, the, the social credit system where the government can dictate your actions and your status in, in society based on what you do or do not do or what you say or do not say. A lot of people will listen to that and think, well, that's a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. So this whole protest movement, you know, is built on a conspiracy theory. Us conspiracy theorists, so to speak, we predicted the Vax passes, we predicted the second and third boosters. And so the people who think that I'm crazy for saying this kind of stuff, I would ask them to go do their own research, find your own facts and form your own opinion. Don't let someone else tell you what to think. And don't be afraid of having your own opinion. Do you not think you're being told what to think by the people who are pushing the theories? In a way, yes, but I'm trying to form my own opinion from that, even though there are biased voices on both sides. How do you think this ends? So I think we're going to accomplish what we've set out to accomplish, and I think it is, it's going to end peacefully with people having the, the right to a you know, just and fair trial. Wait, which people having a just and fair trial? The people who uh, are, uh, that we've, I've talked about to have the corruption and the globalist plans and stuff. I think people are really watching what happens here to see, you know, if this succeeds with what we're trying to do peacefully, I think you're going to see this all over the world.